Today, the three F's, frogging, fishing, and, well, you fill in the blank. Stay tuned for another edition of Tackle Shop Live, starting right now. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Tackle Shop Live. Welcome, everybody, from Facebook and YouTube. Appreciate everything. Appreciate you guys for stopping in today. And gals. Guys and gals. Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, another great show for you. A little shortened up version today. we got a meeting tonight we have to run off to right afterwards. So we're going to cut it a little bit short. Not too bad. But uh, we're dealing with the heat. Yeah, we're, we're dealing with talk, heat. We're going to talk about some hot topics. We're hot. We're hot. Man, Roland, how are you doing? Philip, good. How are you, buddy? Michael? Yeah, man. Jeff Riddle, how are you doing? Kevin Carpenter, James Hawk, Mark, how are you guys all doing? Appreciate you all stopping by. For another edition of Tackle Shop Live. My name is Mike Acord. This is George Acord. That's Corbin Gottwalt. And behind the, cab the camera is Nicholas Wink. Cameraman Nick. Cameraman yep. Nick. Hello. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Everybody good today? We all good? Oh, yeah, man. I mean, yeah. this is just Other great. than the heat. I mean, it's. Oh, dude. It's like. Well. It's hot as a mother. It's getting better, though. The the end. The, the relief is in sight. Yeah. Relief's in sight. It's getting better. I'm looking, yeah. I'm looking for thunderstorms out there, and I don't see anything, man. It's like, it's like nuclear hot out there. You know what I like about the heat? <laughs> I mean, I like the heat too. You know, I mean the hot when it's hot, hot like it's been. What do you like about? You know what I like about that? I mean, you, I, there's all kinds of cold, things I like about that. What do you like about cold that? Cold drinks, cookoffs. <laughs> Wrong. Care to guess? I, I don't know, George. Tell me. Flipping and frogging. Yeah. Oh, flipping and frogging. Cause the basses are in the veggies. Yeah, we always said that when, the, when can, the sweat. Yeah, when the sweat's running down the crack of your ass, that's when you want to be throwing frogs and flipping. Flipping and frogging. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> that's that's not that's not. Uh, why does it sing, sound so funny? <clears throat> I'm just saying this is prime prime time for flipping and frogging and it just so happens we're going to talk about a little bit of frogging tonight yeah absolutely we got a we're, great we got a really great show yeah we're going to talk about some frogging let's talk talk about frogging i have a secret weapon i'm going to unveil oh boy yeah, yeah absolutely i mean it's a <clears throat> it's a finesse fisherman's dream jeez mike Barr, how are you buddy randy Eger, what's up boy uh mark how you doing mark wb jones is in the house from over from over at Facebook or uh, over at uh, YouTube. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you stopping in. Check over on the YouTube, Mike. Over, over on the YouTube. Yep. And Jeff uh, Garecki. Jeff Garecki. What's up, Jeff? How you doing, Joseph? Jeff knows a little bit of something. Andre. About hey, Andre. Uh, I just uh, I, I had your you you sent me a package and I took the package and I opened it up and I set it somewhere and my daughter was cleaning my office today. She found the package, so the package is safe. I'm going to use it this weekend. I'll let you all, I'll let you know all about it. But I kind of question about how to how to use it. It's wait, kind of weird. Wait, so, you're, you're using Andre's package this weekend? Yeah. Can we get, can, can we get some more uh, elaboration on the uh, yeah. on, on Andre's he, package? He, he sent us a package. He said package. with some special uh, <laughs> with some special stuff. So you know, special things. And we're going to give it a whirl. Um, so I I didn't forget about you, Andre. I just misplaced things and. That's the way I am. My office is like, honestly, you take a hand grenade, throw it in there. It looks better. It does. And then way my office. Well, that's how we clean. Usually kept. <laughs> and then, um, but Caitlin. Uh, Did you ever see Caddyshack or, or uh, 
Bill Murray's clean decides to clean his little apartment with the leaf blower. Yeah. That's pretty much how you and I clean our office. I know. I know. Well, well you know, it's the war chest and there's stuff going on in there at all times. Well, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but Caitlin clean cleaned my office and she found all kinds of beautiful gems that me and George were looking for. We found a I found a, a cable, very rare a cable for the I Garmin. found a Remember very that? rare uh Garmin uh um to 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 Minn Kota uh, Ultrax cable. It's but, the it's not your ordinary Garmin to Minn Kota Ultrax cable. Yeah. It's the six to twelve. I mean, this thing's like a unicorn in the cable world. We got it. I got one. We got it. We found it. Dang. But I think my boy Joey Everling's gonna put his his uh, he, moniker yeah, on that I, one. I think yeah, he is. Yeah. Fred Knopp, how are you doing? Uh, George. Uh, who else is here? Robert. Brett's. Uh, yeah, man, we got a whole a awesome. lot of people. There's a lot of people on the show. A lot of a lot of people stopping it. So great. I appreciate it. You know, I got a great idea. But we got let's some, get the show. Yeah, yeah, we got some stuff right. going on. We're going to start that right now. And uh, George is going to come up next. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, I did say George, but I didn't mean that because we got some announcements we got to make first. Uh, oh, <laughs> well, you know, because we're going to go right into tournament fishing right away, George. Greatness waits. Yeah. So me and George fished another of the Conowingo Open Bass Series tournaments um, down. Let's in not really talk about that. Pond I, I was going to say, I got some questions on this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now so we're going to gloss over. It the high was uh, it was a great tournament. We had a great time. We went down there. We caught fish all day long. We did. Um, we just didn't catch we, the right ones. We caught the small size. <laughs> we were catching a lot of small ones. Yeah, we, and we, we did, lost all the big size. We, we had a couple good ones in the live well. And uh, right at the end of the day, when we had to go for for weigh-in, well, let's just say. Well, let's not talk about it. We were a little late. I, I no, we weren't a little late. We, Six minutes or something. We were like a that? lot late. We were a lot late, and they DQ'd yeah. us because we just couldn't get there in time. And, and that and that's fair. But and let's, it, and it, let's move on. It happens. So I mean, you know. But um, so does that mean Setlock won the twenty bucks? Setlock won the twenty dollars, and and that's fine because we we got him last time. He so got he, he got us this time, so we're gonna be where it's even. We're yep. even up. Yep. Even up. So he was in spending his twenty dollars a day, and me and George drank his twenty dollars last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, last Friday night. Last Friday night. Right. <laughs> I think we had more more fun than Seti today. Spending yeah. his time. Uh, yeah, and 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 your and your and your wonderful wife and daughter came along yeah. with us, and we they had, got to enjoy Setlock's loss. Yeah, <laughs> we, we had fun. But anyway, that tournament, um, we had a, a great turnout. We had, I think, nineteen boats. Now, listen, we had more in the first tournament. It's dropped down to 19, but there was another big tournament on the bay, so a lot of them guys got sucked out. Well, not only that, we had bay. there was a weather forecast was for 20 knots out of the south. Yeah, and a lot and of rain. rain, and we we didn't get the wind real bad. But and it, the the true heroes decided that the couch was a better place to be. Yeah, and they were they were they were right. It was tough fishing, Nick. It was a tough day. I mean, guys struggled. We struggled. Uh, the south wind, man, stiff, stiff. Two, three, four footers out there rolling around. But it was uh, it was well, good. If you were in a scooter, guys caught him though. Guys caught him. I'm not making excuses. Guys caught him. Mostly largemouth or smallmouth. Mostly smallies. It was uh, mostly smallies. We had a nice turnout of largemouth. Uh, a better turnout than what a lot of guys think. It, it's pretty close. Largemouth, smallmouth. He doesn't have a total here, but it's pretty close. I will say this: the the top couple teams and what they weighed in. It was pr impressive. It was most impressive. So fourth, and, and I'd like to. We played fourth. Tip my cap tone. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Great, great job, guys. Uh, Fantastic job. Fourth place was Kovac and Setlock. You know, uh, yeah, whatever. They had some fish. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Third place was Andrew Sam's and Alex Thomas. Um, they had five fish. They had a three forty two lunker. Uh, not not lunker for the tournament, but they had a three forty two lunker, which is a nice fish. For a weight of twelve sixty two, they got third. So congratulations to you guys, Troy Davis and Josh Hoshauer. Well, Troy's a freaking hammer down there, and he got second. Five fish, all smallmouth. Uh, Thirteen thirty seven for second place, and the winners. Um, man, these guys are great, man. These guys come up here a couple times a, a year. They're from Maryland. They're uh, Nate Brown and Ryan Dietz. They had five uh, fish. 
and four they had five fish three largemouth two smallmouth for 1403 first place nice bag nice bag of fish they had some beautiful fish yep. but lunker lunker goes to tom bavaro and brian dyson they had a 391 smallmouth smallmouth yep nice small 391 smallie what a hell of a smallmouth corbin yeah and it, i tell you what it was skinny it was long and skinny. it was long and skinny it was a big, long fish. They, they, they're just now starting to put weight on down the small, there. The smallmouth on the lower end of the river spawned really late this year. Yeah, they're, they're thin. Uh, Mike and I have been down for like three weeks in a row fishing the whole lower end, and we've been catching a ton of smallies, and they are they are fresh off of the spawn. Chris Waldron, how you doing? John Heiser, John Henning. What's up, John? How you been, buddy? Um, Jeff Riddle. Uh, Gregory Hall, how are you doing, Greg? And uh, F uh, Fred Knopp. Yeah, beautiful. We weren't frustrated, Fred, but we were running around. We, you know, we were running around a little bit, but, you know, all, all's fair. You point know, A to point B. You know, you practice, you practice your spots and, and, and you got your spots. And when that goes away, you got to go, you got to go find them, you know. So we, we were running. We were actually fishing some good fish. We just, we just were, we we're getting short striked all day long and we weren't throwing the right bait. It, we couldn't dial in. Just couldn't dial in. Well, I, I don't think it was so much that as it was. I, I just felt like we couldn't dial into the right bait. The I majority think we, of the day. We fished over a lot of fish. The majority of the day, we, we didn't do real well. We just we just fishing over top of fish. We're trying to f figure it out if they were there. We, we You know, and we just, you know, the fish we caught weren't like hammers. So we weren't saying like, this is where we need to really yeah. grind it, you know. So we kept moving. And we come back and we get bit, bit there again, and you know we should have slowed down a little bit more. And it happens, you know, when you when you're when you're when you're got all these ideas and you're and you're you know you don't have a lot of time on the water and that in that hole, you find yourself kind of chasing your tail a little bit. And I and I really felt like you know we had a game plan. The game plan was working. A lot of short strikes. Blow, first thing in the morning, we had blow ups on top waters. They were eat, they were heating it and not getting it. I what mean, were, what page are you on? Huh? What page are you on? Why of the excuse book? No, I'm just saying. Oh. I'm just saying. It's, so, so it's, it's you know we break down all these tournaments. I'm breaking it down. There was a lot of guys in the tournaments that said they they missed a lot of fish, a lot of short strikes, a lot of uh, uh, blow ups behind their baits, a lot of this stuff. So it was that kind of day where you really needed to slow down a little bit. And we were power fishing. Me and George just rocking through it. And it's yeah it was a it was a thing i didn't i couldn't grasp on so that was that tournament it was great another another one not this weekend but next weekend is coming up uh the next event the third of seven um events on the conowinga pool we're gonna be there we're gonna be there we're gonna call anybody out uh we're calling everybody out oh we're calling everybody out oh i'm telling you right now there's no reason why any, all you guys shouldn't be there fishing it's fun as hell and, oh, it's a, and, and I'll tell it you, is. it's a challenging body of water. It is. It's a very, very challenging body of water. You know who I'd water. like to see there? Who? Greg Hall. Greg Hall should be there. I would like to see Greg Hall show up. Yeah. I would like to see Dave Wilder show up. Mark from Lisa Lake Fishing Club, you need to be there because you've got a fishing club, so you got to be good. Right? I'd like to see Dave Wilder show up. Dave Wilder. Wilder. Oh, yeah. He fishes there. Dan Sauer, you can come down from up there in, in northern Pennsylvania. It's not that far. You can run that and leave at midnight, be there by blast off. Yeah, Dan. I mean, what's what's the biggie? Mike Barr, you can be there. Come on, Mike. You know the, you know the pool. Bring it on. Bring your pistol grip. Bring it. It's a lot of fun. We have a good time. You can you can roll it's cast all your good spinner guys. Bait. It's all good guys. And you know who won't show know. up? Corbin, you're right. Corbin won't. I don't. I don't get it. Corbin. He's scared. You are scared. Hey, I, I mean, I got something going on. No, time. you don't. You yes, have actually, nothing. You have actually, nothing actually, going actually, on. I do. Corbin's scared. You have nothing, I do. Corbin. I do. Corbin, Corbin, he's Corbin, scared. He Corbin's scared. He's hey, scared. Hey, I'm on the him river and, that day. Him and Cluster, all they fish is the they're the home waters. Oh, I don't want to go away from oh, my home oh, waters. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, it's a little scary I, I, down there. I, I have a prior commitment that day. Oh, sure. No, they're already already good committed. for you. There's sure, four more after this one. All right. Commitments. All right. 
No commitments. You, you missed the other two because you were. All your commitments come in after Bastard. Well, I mean, you had commitments that. for them too, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the last one I had 80 pounds of chicken quarters yeah. I was committed to. And, you know, I mean, it happens on the main river, man. <laughs> Gregory says, Greg Hall says he, he won his club tournament there nine years ago. Well, I'll tell you, hey, last time we were on it was 10 years ago. So, Greg, bring it. Bring it. All right. That's enough of that talk. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay, let's move uh, on here. We're beating this horse hard. Do come in, do come to the tournament. It's a lot of fun. Um, real quick, the, uh, uh, fantasy fishing, uh, series has, has been going on and uh, listen, all you guys, you're getting your prizes. I promise you it's the shipping thing is unbelievable. We have nothing. So you're getting your prizes. Everybody's going to get them. We're after this tournament, we're going to ship everything out. We're, we're gathered it all up. We're, we were picking and choosing and getting it. It's all coming. The rods and reels, everything's coming out. We're gonna ship it next next week uh, after this after this event that's coming up here. Once we figure out who the winner is, but uh, man, what a crazy um, champ was that Champlain? Yeah, Champlain. Champlain. Yeah, what a crazy Champlain. There was a bunch of ties. Seventy eight pounds five ounces was the total, and the winner was Brian Schmidt. Seventy five. We're talking of the uh, fantasy. Oh, Wait a second here. Did he have a winner here? Anyway, there was a winner. Yeah, if you can read that flow 82, chart. 82, nine, Chris Smith. Wait, four, under, under. Well, I don't know. He's got some kind of crazy stuff here. I could have sworn he said it was. Well, let's 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 wrap that up with a bow next week. Ben Stans, Tom Ryan, Michael Lazell, Anthony Buzio, and Chris Smith were all, in, like, tied. And then there was a tiebreaker, 70 eight pounds five ounces and there was somebody real close to there so i think it was anthony buzzo i think that's what he said was the man closest to it so that's the tiebreaker anyway um so yep uh brian schmidt 78 five uh you know so there that's that's our that's our thing we're going to get all that stuff shipped out to you guys um after the last tournament we're, all the prizes are going to be given there's a lot of great stuff a lot of great tackle packs, a couple rods and reels for the first couple weeks. Then we switch to tackle packs, great tackle packs with, with different stuff in there. So that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. All right, tournament fishing. We're going to talk about a couple of tournaments here. Let's get on with that right now. All right. Yeah. So uh what was it? Brian what? Schmidt. Dang. He, is, he was on here. He won the Elite if you're on, on Champlain. If, if you come to Tackle yeah. Shop Live live, you, you will win a tournament. That's just the way. That's our. That's our. He completed his trifecta. Yeah, we came real close with uh, Hank Cherry, but he won. He, was, he wasn't he was live, but we touched touched through. I mean, the, the palm was next. Yeah. He, he completed his trifecta. Palma needs to win one. He won. Everything you could win on Champlain with the exception of a tour level event. And guess what? Can't say that anymore. Nope. That's right. So a big tackle shop live. Congratulations goes out to Brian Schmidt. And uh, we're very happy for him. And they are now on the St. Lawrence. Today was day one of the St. Lawrence. And I mean, the MLF tournament was there. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we went on and on and on and on and on about this place. Now the elites are up there. They had 15th place was 20 pounds today. Bernie Schultz, first place, 25 5. That's your boy, George. Were, were they all small, small mouth? Were they all small, small mouth? God, yeah. He's on something giant, man. 25 5. Um, small mouth. I, small mouth. I, I mean, is that the biggest bag ever? No, no, masters? no. You'll see that tomorrow. Probably by the people. One, one of think? the Johnson brothers, bro. Come on. Really? Well, the they Johnson brothers are in second and third. Yeah. Tied. And that's funny because they're tied exactly at 20, 23, seven. 23, seven. Yeah. The they're brothers. in second and third. Yeah, and that's funny. listen, these guys are proving this place to be all that it's cracked up to be. A lot of drop shotting, a lot of uh, yeah, I different mean, stuff, though, too. Yeah, like hair jigs. You see a lot of hair jigs and other jigs, too, today. 
Yeah. Well, the hair jig thing is 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 big right now. Well, it's blown open. It's wide open. You know, everybody and, knows. About and that it. that place is tailor made for hair jig fishing. But you know, we talked about this several times on Tackle Shop Live. You know, they're not fishing a hair jig the way you might think you fish a hair jig. It's not cast it out, let it sink to the bottom, and twitch, twitch, twitch. You get up tomorrow morning early at seven o'clock and put on your uh, Bassmaster Live Mix. And you will see these guys throwing a hair jig, and they will be casting it out, and they will be winding it in. Yeah. And the thing we, about this little freaking, and it's an, it's a, we, it's we a, talked about it our last, uh, it's last an show. ace of an ounce. Yeah. It's a little Crazy. marabou jig. And the thing about it is, they're catching like <laughs> four to six pound fish on this thing. Gotta love it, man. It is ridiculous. Yep. And it's our, and it's our turf. That's our, that's smallies. So it's our, it's our turf. So, you, you know, this is something we need to try. Yeah, so the hair jigs playing, the drop shots playing, mm. the Ned rigs playing, the Carolina rigs playing. Yeah. Rick Clun. Yeah. Uh, he's been throwing a spinner bait for four days. Now, today he didn't do so well. Now, keep in mind, Rick Clun's like 74 years old. It's hot. He's been fishing for like two straight weeks now. And... He's throwing a spinner bait because he's a power fisherman. He's like, I'm catching them on winding baits or I'm not catching them. And he said in practice he had 20 to 23 pounds every day on a spinner bait. So we saw Seth Fighter catch him on chatter bait today. today. He had a small bag. Oh. He, didn't, he didn't connect today. It's easy to do. Up you know there. what he says he's going to do tomorrow? The Saints throw, throw spinner, spinner bait. Go out and throw a spinner bait <laughs> because he had 20 to 23 pounds every day. Yeah. Well, who was who else? Uh, Chris Aldane came in with thirteen pounds, but he saw twenty five pounds follow his lures around. They just would not commit. In yeah. practice, he was catching them. Yeah, during the, during the turn, they just didn't bite. So he can come in tomorrow and with twenty five. He, he made a he made an right eighty mile in. run, 80, 88 miles. And you know what he says he's going to do tomorrow? He's going to run eighty eight miles. 88 miles. So, when, you, when you see those kind of fish, Corbin, yeah, how the hell do you get away from it? You don't. You don't. You, you, you don't. Mean, yeah, I mean, for someone like Zaldane, I mean, if you're already guaranteed in the classic, you're fishing for first place, man. Yeah. I Austin mean, Felix? Yeah. He's fishing for first place. He's running out. He ain't running out to the Fox and Grenadier Islands. He's running out to Galoo. Ooh. Now. That's the one that. I'm talking like when you leave Waddington, you got like two hours. Of fishing time. No, of boating to get there. I was going to say. It, and it, three hours to get back. Yeah, so that's five. You got three hours to fish. Yeah, and he's catching them like ain't nobody's business. Yeah. Well, and, you saw that show where, uh, was that fighter in, uh, what's the name, went out there? Zona. Zona went out there. During the spawn. There was thousands of them. Yeah, the only problem with going out there, there is... Uh, the wind. Now, the wind's going to blow 30 tonight, but tomorrow the winds are supposed to lay up a little bit. And then on Saturday, it's supposed to blow northeast. So the <laughs> lake is going to be heavily in play on, on Saturday. So <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, 25 5. And then these here, Chris and Corey brother Johnston's with 23 and change. And Seth Fighter, who is probably done with the angler of the year talk oh. now. Oh yeah. Uh, he got it wrapped up. Yeah. I mean, he had a, he had a rough start this morning and it yeah. was funny because I was watching him on tackle shop. <laughs> I mean, on a lot, a lot, what do they call it? Live mix. Yeah. And he said to his cameraman, he goes, are we live? And the cameraman said, no. And he goes, what the fuck are these fish? doing?" <laughs> <laughs> Cause he lost his first four fish. He was like, he was rattled and, but then yeah. he calmed down and he whacked them. Yeah. So, he, did. he had a hell of a bag. Again, hook your boats up to your vehicles and go to New York, the Thousand Islands, yeah. and go fishing. Next year, I'm going for two weeks myself. I'm going to Champlain, and then I'm going to go right to the Thousand Islands because after watching this, nah. it seems like that's where I want to spend my July. Hey, George. I think we should go there in August. You want to know something really funny? The Toyota Series going on up in Champlain. Mm -hmm. Guess who's leading it? Brian Thrift, baby. Brian Thrift? Really? Brian Thrift. He's fishing it? 
better watch yourself. <laughs> you better watch yourself. I, I mean, I I, 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 ah. I, I, don't, I didn't really see where you were going there because I don't really associate Brian Thrift with no, that. No, not at all. When I you know. got the Tom LaVictories yeah. and the other Joe Thompson local. Well, I mean, well, the local sticks up there yeah. are tough. I mean, Tom LaVictory is tough. Well, that, he, he's he's tied with Brian Thrift right now. Tom LaVictory. Yep. Yeah. I mean, when you go up to his yeah. house. Yeah. I mean, let's just face it. It's tough. So, yeah. but yeah, we got a lot of tournament action going on right now. We got yeah the Elite Series on the Thousand Islands. We got the Toyota Series on Champlain. Uh, our own cameraman, Nick's getting ready to go to Champlain to fish the BFL up BFL. there. BFL. BFL Nick, we call him. Yep. Oh, yeah. BFL Nick's going to yep. win it next week. And uh, Mike and I are going down for the most prestigious of all of them, the Conowingo Series Open. <laughs> two, uh, two weeks. <laughs> possible first pace payday of over $900 plus Setlock's 20. a $20 yeah. Calcutta with Brian Setlock. Hey. So yeah. you can fish the elites, hey. whatever. Hey, you that's know. my elite, baby. We're that's my Conowingo elite. Open. That's my Full elite. Set. You know where else I'm going next week? Local elite. To the yeah. bear, are you going, going to George? To the George is, yeah. yeah, George is leaving um, Tuesday. Tuesday, going to ICAST. ICAST, I'm not allowed to go. He won't let me go. I'm going to ICAST next week. I'm going to be bringing back all the goodies. Yeah. As a matter of fact, in preparation for my ICAST trip, uh -oh. I already ordered all the ICAST goodies from Z-Man. Uh oh, mm. Daiwa. Mm. Oh boy. Shimano. Oh boy. And let's not forget Rapala. Mm. Oh geez. So, you know what that means. So what are those two are all so why you gotta go early? So, so why George, you gotta go then? George, so oh, I got other things to do. Why you gotta so, go? So Charlie Steakhouse, Corona Cigar yeah, Bar. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. So what are those two hour meetings there? I mean, you just told me yeah. you're playing top golf. Yeah. I mean, well, playing top golf. I, I okay, need, let me break down my iCast uh, itinerary yeah, for you. Here I mean, we, go. For, we need these guys to fly in on Tuesday, right? Right. Then I have to go to the new product showcase, and that's grueling. I'm not going to lie to you. That's fun. There's only like three bars in the whole building. <laughs> <laughs> and everything's free, but I'm going to muscle through that. Then I'm going to Charlie's Steakhouse. Okay. Wood fired. <sighs> 50, 1,500 ribeye. 1,500 degrees. Ribeye. Yeah. All right. Walk in humidor. Yeah. Then I got to go Wednesday to all those meetings at ICAST. Right. You know. Suffer through that. Get more stuff ordered up for all the latest and the greatest. And then I'm going to Top Golf. Got a meeting there with Costa. George, have you ever played Top Golf? I don't plan on playing Top oh, Golf this oh, time oh, either. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me give you a little secret here. Let me give you a little <laughs> secret. Now, I want all these viewers out there that are watching right now that have played Top Golf before to let me know if I'm right or wrong because I'm two time Top Golf champion. <laughs> uh, I won't be I'll swinging play, no, a club. No, 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 no. George. Oh, you got to swing George, a club. No, George, you have to swing a club. No. And, and listen. Oh, yeah. All the guys and all the people there, they always go and they pick the driver, right? But it's kind of like the old story of the tur tortoise and the hare. Sand wedge? Eight iron, bro. Eight <laughs> iron, go for the blue target. It's about 150 yards. You're, and, and whatever you do, right, make sure you push your number. And when that cart's driving around, hitting the balls, trying to pick them up, that's when you get the driver out. And if you hit okay, the cart, so you automatically win the game. I'm just letting you know. What's going right. to happen at Top Golf is none of that. I'm going to Top Golf with Costa, and I'm going to drink their free beer all night. So well, that's I, my goal. I mean, because yeah. I can't swing a golf club to save my life. Just hey, now if I could bring up, if I could bring like they a, do the one-handed thing. Remember, like you got to watch that one hand. You just stand up there with one hand and go like this. You Somebody's going to get hurt. Guarantee you whip I, it. I got a dollar. It says George plays top, but, uh, top golf. Uh, the whole to wrap this up. The whole thing is next week is ICAST, uh, yep. which is a big deal in our industry. It's when yep, all yep. of the manufacturers yep. present their new product lines. Yep. Not only that, it is a time when we get to spend interfacing with these people and lining up like for our events, like, Line, line you know, up bass, we have Bass Fest in January. Well, we have Cabin Fever in March. Quite, and those pros that you see here, yeah, they're all worked out at ICAST. So, so, so that's on the face table. Face to face stuff. Yeah, you know, get uh, uh, getting all the newest product is in now. Things are changing in this, you know, current climate here, and that's why you know companies like Shimano and Daiwa and Rapala um, and Z Man. You know they're getting ahead of the they're getting ahead of the curve. Those orders are written. Those orders are in. You're in line. That stuff's coming. It's going to start showing up in about 
three weeks. So we will bring it to you piece by piece, minute <clears throat> by minute. I might even go live from the show floor at ICAST Whoa. once in a blue moon. Whoa. And uh, yeah, so so so, so, wait, so that's technical. So Mike, Don't expect it. So Mike, <laughs> that means you and I are holding down the fort next yeah, week. Yeah. So Nick's going fishing, so he's not going to be here. So it's me and Corbin. We'll, we'll call George. We we might call George that night from the uh, Charlie are. Steakhouse. We're, and, well, we're definitely calling Nick. <laughs> we're going to call Nick. We're going to call George. We're gonna, we're going to make these calls on you know on the air. Yeah. And me and Corbin are going to run it, and and it's going to be fun. You guys no, gotta, I'm not going to Charlie's on Thursday. Thursday, I'm going to the Brazilian Steakhouse. <laughs> they, they, they're going to come up, come up to you. you, call me if you want. Oh, oh, George, you want the ham? Yes, let's cut the ham. You can call you want, me if you want. You want me, the yeah. pork? Yeah, I'll start. I'm just saying, I'll be at the Brazilian Steakhouse. On Damn Thursday. it. Right. I'll be eating cold cuts on a piece of bread, I, I think, if I'm lucky. <laughs> All right. Yep. Let's move on. Transition time. All boys. right. So, so yeah. So, tomorrow, live. Uh, Elite Series, and if everybody could jump on there and watch that and wish our boy GDP, GDP yeah, yeah, Big solid finish of the year. Uh, he needs twenty. Good luck, because he's going to go out and sack a sack a sack. sack. Giants. So who you got winning this thing? This tournament right here. Yep. Not Bernie Schultz, <laughs> Corey or Chris. That's the question. Well, I I saw Swindle caught twenty one today. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm not ready to place any wagers yet because I'm looking at uh, Austin Felix right now. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. And you can never count out Palinick. Yeah. So, sounds good. We got Brian Ward is a marshal at the Elite Series on the Thousand Islands, and he rode with Darrell Gleason today, which is a cool ride. You know, that oh, guy yeah. tore it up on Rayburn this year. I'm sure he uh, told you about it today if you asked him. Well, I think he's up there. Who are you up there with, Brian? Richie You're... Hall's up there, too, as a marshal. Oh, Richie Hall's up there. Richie Hall sent me some nice uh, pictures today Brian from up there. Brian Ward, and who else who is up there? Uh... He didn't tell me. Somebody, I, I saw somebody else that we knew, but I forget the name. Yeah, uh, so that's great. I hope you. I hope that experience is awesome, guys. Ed Radowski's going up to the draw. If you drew on. anybody going to the lake tomorrow, run into town and buy a full-face motorcycle helmet. Yeah. Yep. Damn it. Buy, or earplugs, one or the other. Both. Fantastic. Right. Outstanding. All right. So we talked some fishing. Tournaments. Now we're, now we're going to talk some tactics. Well, are we going to do some launch? Launching? Is this the, Pro the Pro launching? Pro the launch series. Yeah. We're going to talk we're about gonna some frogging. Launch, the launch we're going to launch some frogging. Yeah. So we talked about the three Fs today. Fishing. Frogging. Now I'm we're fishing first. Now we're going to go to frogging. Yep. Now yeah. I mean, it's frog season, bro. Yeah. You know, and, and, and maybe we should throw a few frogging. Well, we, we, to we, we talked frogging before, so we're not going to go like, like frogging, frogging. We're going to talk about some, some, some frogs, some new frogs, and then some tidbits. Yeah. We got to throw some things. We got to throw some juice in there. Some I mean, small things. Okay. I mean, there's a couple yeah. of things you can do on your frogging to yeah. uh, increase your couple of things. Yeah. But first, what I want you to do, George, and I want you to, to break down the new launch series frog. Yeah. So, break um, it down. scum frog, which many of you know for many, many years, um, with the old, you know, $2. You know, silver hook, you know, plastic frog from back in the day. Uh, well, they expanded over the years. You know, they came out with the trophy series. Um, they came out with the trophy series popper and on and on and on. They came out with the Bigfoot. Well, they were purchased and bought by a company called American Bait Works. And American Bait Works is a very progressive company in the tackle industry they have purchased scum frog they have purchased net bait they are a part owner if not majority owner in halo rods um they are affiliated with a canadian company called sth which is the set the hook plastics company out of canada and on and on but one of the things they're doing, oh, and by the way, speaking of frogs, they bought snag proof. Okay, so 
we're going to cover a few things on frogs here because we get an incredible amount of questions about snag proof. Um, so the launch frog is their is their first newest. Um, let me get this thing out of the package here. This is their their newest entry in the scum frog market since uh, the trophy series, which has been a while. And this is a frog that was designed by their pro staff, um, which is, you know, Lee Livesey and a couple of the other guys that are, that are on their pro staff that are, you know, tour level pros. And the tricks that we talk about in frogging, like, for example, when you're frogging this time of the year and on, when, when you have the cheese mats, you know, you need to add weight to your frog to get that frog to sit down in the mat. Well, not with this one. This has a tungsten internal weight. And the reason they did tungsten was they wanted that weight to be small so that when the, 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 compact, when the frog compacts, there's not a big blob of weight in there to interfere with that hook set. Um. The launch frog is, you know, set up, you take it out of the package, you tie it on, and you fish with it. And that's exactly what Lee Livesey said when he won his first elite tournament two years ago, primarily on the launch frog. So it's a very high-quality frog. It's got, um, I don't know if they say what brand of hook it's got in it, but it's got a really sharp, nice hook in it. And... That's the launch frog. So the launch frog is now in stock. And, um, well, it's actually been in stock, but we, we now have it, you know, we're talking about it. It's, 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 it's on the agenda right now. It's ready to go on, yeah. on, awesome. on. The and their colors are freaking sweet, man. I mean, they have all the colors. I'm not going to take them all out of the packages, but the, the, the American bait works is not, um, buying these companies for their name. The American Bait Works is taking the existing uh, legacy of these companies yeah. and bringing the, the life, current life. market into it. You're bringing life into it. You know, like this launch frog is a prime example of scum frog. You know, for many years, scum frog was just that, that buck 298 frog. You know, and which then they, fish, which caught well, it caught back fish. in the day, there wasn't much to choose from. Yeah, but it caught it caught you fish. Still and then, fish. and then scum frog updated to the to the trophy series. They they put an owner frog hook in it. Uh, it's a primo frog. So all American Bait Works is doing with the acquisition of this company is basically furthering that along. So the launch series, uh, you can check it out on the on the on the website. Um, it, the, the colors are right. Yeah. That the underside of that frog just looks incredible. I mean, yeah. the detail and everything, George, I mean, I'm really impressed. Yeah. I mean, it's all about the colors with them. I mean, the, these, these pros are building these colors. You know, a lot of times when you see a top color that has a big green head on it, like that, so you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh, Ron Ashelman's with Brian Ward up there. Okay, cool. That's great. I didn't mean to bust you up. There. Yeah, it's no problem. That's no problem. I say that. Mark Goldberg likes your hat. Goldberg. <laughs> Mark. Wait. We got a new hat. George isn't yeah, all. We're going to talk about that later. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so uh, Launch Frog, um, and there is a pretty big shipment coming in. Now, just to touch on Scum Frog, I mean, uh, Snag Proof, they, they bought Snag Proof. You know, Ish's Fat Frog, Ish's Poppin' yeah. Fatty. Yeah. Um, Bobby's Perfect Bobby's Frog. Perfect frog. Bobby. I mean, Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> a really important line of frogs, you know, which, you know, Snag Proof kind of dwindled its way down. You know, it, it, the quality never left them, but the passion did. Um, and the woman that ran that company did a hell of a job, but, Finally, the you know Father Time won, and they they moved on to bigger and better ventures. But they sold it to American Baitworks, who, as stated, 
is doing the name justice. So yep. they basically had to start over. They did. Uh, the equipment was worn out. The molds were worn out. Everything was worn out. We got a lot. We and got. They all, started over. We got several of the lines, that, you know, that, that are here in the shop and and online that you guys should check out and 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 fish them because they're really a hardcore fish catching frog now, and, and they always been. Even the small little stuff, the the goofy. The well, go, the goofy little. Have things, you seen? I mean, uh, it, it, they they catch fish. You know, on the snag on the snag proof side of things. They have just released Isha's Fat Frog, only it's not called Isha's Fat Frog anymore because Isha isn't with them. Right. It's called the Fat Frog. So that frog and and, and that was that's great technology. They've they've they completely redid the colors. There's like a dozen colors. They just gave us our first shipment. It's on its way in here. So the fat frog boasts the inner you know, tube inner tube technology. Next week. Yeah. You guys will be breaking down fat frog. Yeah, the inner yeah. tube technology, which prevents any water from getting in the body of the frog. That's and like the, and that's the like color the worst thing in the world. The man. color choices are prime for what. Yeah. So you know, so, if you're fishing some heavy cheese mats, you either need to go buy yourself a launch frog, right, or you need to weight the frogs that you have because you want that frog to sit down in that mat. You don't want that frog to sit on top of that cheese. You, when you pull up on a mat and you see all them little frog trails, yeah, that's what you want your frog to be doing. You want that thing to splat when it lands, and you want that thing to be down in there Digging because in. Yeah. you added a three eighths of an ounce of weight to it. Right. You know, so that is a key little thing for you for as the season progresses and those cheese mats get thicker and thicker and thicker. George, I might be wrong when I say this, but I think these hooks are already partially bent up. I mean, if you take your finger and you like run across the back, either that, that they, way they do design, look, they look like, tweaked. You, you know, a lot of people t will tweak the spro or whatever, but I can tell you, like, that's that's like you yeah, know enough that's to do some damage, That's like tweaked bro. already, bro. Yeah, that's and, a that's a little frog trick that Corbin's alluding to there. Um, basically, you're going to open up the hook, but you're not just going to open it up this way. You're also going to open it out this way. Yeah. Now that's going to greatly inter, uh, increase your hookup ratio, but the problem with it is your frog's not going to be nearly as weedless. So if you're fishing pads, uh, um, cheese, you know, <laughs> you're going to get snagged a lot. You know, it's not so bad on like regular mats because you're on top of them. Mm -hmm. But when you get into the pads and things like that, and that hook points up and out, yep. but you will thank you will thank yourself on tournament day uh, on your hookup ratio. Well, let's face it, frogging is a game of percentages. You know, yes, it's it it's you're never going to land them all, you're never going to hook them all, but you want to increase your percentages as much as you possibly can. So, so uh, weighting your frog and getting it down in that mat where there's fish when they when they grab it, it drops through quicker. Uh, tweaking your hooks so when they do get it in your mouth, you, you got a little better shot of getting hooks in them. Yep. Um, you know, uh, different things, you know, trimming the tails. If you're open water fishing and you need a little bit more walk to it, you can trim the tails to help you. And the you. walk is key. Walk yep. is key to it. Yeah. Now, not on key. a mat, but open water. You yeah. want, you know, when you're fishing like a, like a, like a, a mill foil that's oh, like just, just coming up to the surface and stuff, and you got water and stuff, you want that frog to really walk. Or you if know? you're skipping boat docks. Boat or docks, skipping cut banks, cut banks, overhangs, uh, under overhangs, yeah. un underneath trees and stuff. You want that frog to walk, and it's very, very important. I think you just alluded to something here. Ooh. Oh, oh, you Ooh. know, very Did few I give people. Up? I gave something up. Very few people I have ever fished with have thrown a frog on anything other than vegetation. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm a frog guy from the. Dean Rojas school. I mean, I will throw a frog. I will skip boat docks with a frog. I fish cut banks with a frog. I fish shade lines with a frog. Just like a, it's, it's a weedless like a, top water. It's a top right. water bait. But it's weedless. Yeah. In trees, you can throw it right inside trees and stuff. It's really how, good. How, how many years ago was trees. it that we fished that snag proof open? Oh, man. That was, that was like a while. Wow. It was interesting, though. It was, it was, you know, snag proof frogs only. That's so much fun. I wish I wish they would do that again. That but, was that was so but much the fun. learning experience. I know. You know, you like, had to fish it. 
one of the things that Mike and I did that day was we ran into a, it was, it was hot. It was August. It was hot. It Stinking was, hot. Like it was sweat the, rolling down the crack. Hot. Dog, it, days, of do, dog, dog days, days of summer. Dog days of summer. And we spent a lot of time fishing in the backs of creeks yep. that were really didn't have a lot of vegetation in them. Yeah. And we were skipping boat docks. We were fishing lay downs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Let me tell you something. Yeah. It's pretty damn effective. It is. You can throw right in them trees with it. Damn it. You don't get. It's not like throwing a splash in a lay down. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sounds to me like a <laughs> sure why I said that. SFT frog only tournament might be in the making. Done you there. Been there. Done know, that. I, that I mean, that's old news right there. I we, know. I we know. did that. We did that until we got bored with that one. I know. I know. <laughs> so yeah. So George, while we're talking about scum frogs, you know, I walked through the aisle and uh, you know, I always like to pick out some some pretty little colors, and most people are familiar with the spro. So I got one that I want you to kind of. Break down when you would use this thing because this thing is just flat out beautiful. Well, that's blue dog. <laughs> blue dog. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I, I, I'm probably not the best guy to ask about that because if you ever looked at my frog box, black, they're black, black and yellow, they're white and white, or they are what they call natural red, which yeah. is like a reddish brownish color. And the only other exception that I throw to that rule is a is a is a frog that that was an old snag proof color called Bobby's Perfect Frog. Oh, it was called Fred's Frog. Yes, and Fred's Frog is a bluegill imitator, white with a little bit of orange on it. It had green bright back. white legs. Well, the le I think it was the legs. And bright white Honestly. legs and a white belly with a big patch of orange. With a big and, patch of orange on it. You know, I will say this about that. That's a Fish the, catching mother effing dog the right there. Fred's frog and really anything that looks like that. And the natural red from Spro yeah. and really anything that looks like that. Those are two like alternate colors that yeah. you don't leave home without when you're going on a day of frogging. Yeah. You don't leave you don't leave home without yeah. when you're going because if they're not eating a black frog or a white frog. They're going to be on a, a, a bluegill pattern, or they're going to be on something like that natural red. Now, there are some other funky colors and funky frogs. Oh, that hell have, yes. That will have their day in the sun. Black and yeah. yellow up in Lake uh, Lake Oneida. Just saying. Yeah. Got, got to have it. Yeah. Blue dog. Got to have it. <laughs> and can I, can I add to that? Killer gill. That's how, when you start out frog fishing, you have some black and white frogs. Yeah. When you get to be... A but veteran of the sport. You got every color. They you make. have the thirty-seven hundred deep boxes. Oh, but not one. Oh, yeah. Two. That you because have and regular. you found you found a uh, a tournament you were fishing. You got on a pattern where you had to have you know this tropical hey, white you or can, yada yada yada. And you could be patriotic at the same time. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Corbin. Oh yeah. So Spro did the um, American Flag Series, yep. the Patriotic, Patriotic Series. They took their two best-selling frogs, Patriotic. the Midnight Walker, everybody and the should Albino, have one. and they put the flag on the back. You can't afford. You can't like you know dig a hole and put a big flagpole up in your uh, in your yard. Take this and hang it on your door. Forget works. that. Hang it on your Christmas tree, man. Works well in the summertime. Christmas you know what in they're July. Doing, Mike? Cast it up in a tree. <laughs> you know hang it from doing, a tree. You know what they were doing with that frog? They were celebrating the 15th anniversary of the bronze eye frog. 15. I wonder, I wonder how many millions of dollars Spro made on this on the bronze eye frog. I mean, like jillions. Because that was definitely the one to me that made me start frogging. It's, above, it's above that. It's, in, it's into yeah, the it's, jillions. You know, now you see the new popping frog size, the baby popping frog, the baby uh, frog, the big one. Oh, you might want to get ready. There's more coming. Oh my goodness. Somebody said uh something about pink. Well, they came out with a yep. flamingo. Yep. And Spro uh, did. Spro, yep. Spro came out with a with a flam flamingo. Yeah, snake proof had one long ago. Yeah, I know, but I'm just saying, Spro, Spro came out with a flamingo. That's like that's like pink. It's you know, a lot, in some of these situations when you're fishing mats, it's just about what you can see. It's not the color of the bait, you know. It's that that's getting a strike. It's the vibration going through the the, the grass, and it doesn't matter what color it is. It, you know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And when the, I think the more open the water becomes, the more the more you want to deal with natural colors and natural you know natural stuff i i, I uh, saw the thing where uh, ish was down in florida and he was saying about 
the three colors that, that are important for Florida. He said, I, I use these, uh, you know, down here in Florida, but when I go to California and fish the Delta down there, then I have these three colors. Yep. But one of those co three colors was the, was the same one as he used in Florida. Right. Then when he goes down south, he was throwing three colors, and two of those colors were the same ones that they fished. You know, so so you don't need to have a million million colors. You just need to have – yeah, the right ones, you know, at the right time. How about that day when Ish was here for August and he jumped in my boat and yeah. he walked outside? And I'll never forget this day. Yeah. And he walked outside and he came back in and he goes, oh, we going frogging? I said, yeah. He goes, oh, <laughs> I only need one color. Reached over, grabbed a black frog. He goes, that's it. That's all and you that's what he right. threw all day. And, and, and he, he called him. And he caught him. him. Yeah. And he called him. It, it was, it's neat. It's neat to see that, yep. you know, it's really neat to see that. So, so something fun that we do. When we when we break down a technique, as we as we do, we like to do a little setup. Yeah. So, Mike, yeah. um, you know, what is your go to frog fishing setup? I want to know rod, line, and gear ratio. Well, I mean, I love throwing frogs. You know, I I just I absolutely love it. I don't get a chance to throw it on the real heavy stuff that often, so I don't talk about that too much. But my just overall frog chuck in you know is a seven three medium heavy righto fast taper uh 50 pound braid yep gotta have it yep and i am a a, a, a spro bronze eye popping frog guy that's just what i throw a lot of confidence i, I just have confidence and so i always start with that and I, I i you know i fish all the different frogs like george said we fish snag proof frogs we fish you know uh uh, regular frogs we fish popping frogs we fish all kinds of all kinds of frogs but i start out with the uh, spro popping frog it's usually a white one or a black one or i really like the white it's called uh tropical tropical, white. tropical. white that's the one i really like it has a little orange in the tails and stuff but i you know that's that's what i throw but i walk my frog and it's so important to learn how to do that guys and the popping frog walks well it, it does walk really really well it's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but it's, it's, it's learnable. It's something you can learn to do. And if, and, and, you know, it's just, it's just a matter of working slack line. And, and we talked about this with walking czar spooks already last week. I think yeah. we talked about it with poppers a couple of weeks a ago, bit of slack line. you know, you got to have a little bit of slack line. You got to be able to work that. But the key thing you said was medium heavy, medium heavy. Yeah. So what you that medium little heavy, tip. what that medium, thank you. Yeah. What that medium heavy rods doing is, Walking, and you know what else you're good at with that thing? Skipping. Yep. If you have that tip, yeah, you can skip the frog real well, really well. Yes. You know, and skipping is a is, is something it's that, that that you really need to practice, and it's all wrist. Yeah. And it's almost like you're skipping a stone when you were a little kid. You're just skipping rocks. You just it's all wrist. Yep. It's right there. Rolling it over, and you just Let's see it one more skip time. The, you want to see that? Yeah. One, I, one I one practice time. it in front of the mirror. I I, I want to see it one more. Look at that. That's look at that. Look at that. Mark, mark, mark it, Dewey. Mark it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was beautiful. I'm next in line. So I'm going to I'm going to go over my setup and uh, I like to beef things up a tad. Not so much on the rod. Uh, I like a seven foot rod. Mm. I fish a, well, you're just a little short brugger. So, you know, you got to go a little short. Well, you know, I mean, oh, here we go. He's here little. We go. There's a time. He's just a little guy. There's a time and a place for a long rod, which is actually late summer for me. Yeah, when the when the water gets crystal clear around the grass beds, making a bomb. But I'm cast. I'm talking yeah. about my all around. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, I, I'm not talking about bomb. Uh, that's what I that's what I was saying. So I'm a Loomis guy when it comes to frogging. Um, I own a wide variety of brands. Look at my rod locker. I got a great selection. I'm very proud of. But I love my old school MBR 844, which is a heavy. Magnum bass rod with an old school fast taper. It's not extra fast. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't do fifty pound braid. I s exclusively frog with sixty five pound braid. Yeah. And to me, it's the one rod. Well, not the only rod, but the main rod that I like an eight plus gear ratio reel on. Yeah. yeah I, I fish a uh, either a Corrado or a Cronarch or whatever. Um, with 65 braid and an 8.3 to 8.5 ratio. And the reason for that is when I come back, when I'm frogging and that fish eats that frog, I pause, I reel, I 
set the hook, and you all can relate to this. You're all back here. And now that, you know, 37 yeah. to 39 inches of line per crank, <laughs> yeah. boom, boom, boom. I'm right back in front of that fish again. Yeah. So frogging, and, and the nice thing about a frogging rod is it, it also doubles outstanding for pitching yeah. junk. So frogging and flipping. Eight, five Mark, uh, that's why I like Mike. Mark, you're asking about frogging for smallies. Now, I, I've i done a ton, a ton of frogging for smallies. It's not my number one pick. No. Yeah, no. I'll flat out tell you it's not my number one no. pick. I've tried it over and over, trying different, different things. Now, I've caught fish on it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, Lake Oneida, mm -hmm. Susquehanna River. Uh, you know, all around uh, different lakes. You know, I've caught smallmouth on huh? good ones too. And it's and you try to duplicate it. it I don't know what it is about smallmouth. Yeah. If I may, it, yeah. The toad that's what is I was a much say. much yeah. better yeah. choice for frog and smallies. Corbin, tell us about the toad setup for frog and smallies. So, like for me, I'm going to throw a toad because I can chuck and wind it, and it just seems like. You know, when you're when you're walking a bait or something like that for smallmouth in heavy grass, to me, I usually don't catch smallmouth out of a mat. I usually catch them out of like the sparse cover or like maybe a couple clumps or an island or you know something like that. So, you know, and, and what I mean by that is the thickness of the grass is usually not what I'm going to call a one ounce weight pitching heavy. Like usually, you don't if you're if you're fishing a thick mat, probably nine times out of ten not going to catch a smallmouth. And if you catch one. It's because he's really hungry. So usually like where it drops off or, you know, it, maybe the water's a little higher and you can get something through it like a buzz bait or a horny toad. It, it just seems like your hookup percentages is much better because you've got one, you got one hook or maybe you use the double, but I use a single one and you got one bait at a straight trajectory versus a frog. that's kind of more erratic. And I mean, smallmouth are known for blowing up behind top waters and missing yeah. top waters and things yeah. like that. So just to not, me, it's just not the bait that's real. To me, the, the percentage of hookup ratio with smallmouth is not there on a frog like it is for largemouth. Yeah. So that's that's there 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 are there is a time and a place. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's why I go through. and and you do want to use the toad yep. style bait. There's actually someone on here talking about Scott Callens talking about where he lives, a ribbit. So yeah. I mean, yeah. he's throwing a ribbit. We're throwing a horny toad. Horny you toad, could be ribbit. throwing rage toad. You could be throwing a rage toad. There's so a ton of throwing, frog, you yeah. know, the big bite, uh, tour toad, whatever. Oh, look who's stopping by. Yep. Mama Wink. And, and Daddy Wink's watching at the same time. Hi, hi next mom. Hi, next mom. <laughs> hi, hi next mom. Hey, Troy. Uh, all right. So, um, so, Mike, another call, another interesting yeah, frog. I, I was gonna. Well, not only that, but um, one of the things that, that I wanted to say too is, you know, when you're tying on to these frogs, you know, um, tie it like you, you know, tie it like you mean it because or not, you need yeah. it. You need a good knot well, on there. Don't mess around with any kind of crazy knots. I mean, put that Palmer knot on there. Put that braid on there. Tie it tight. Check your knot. Leave a nice tag on it because you're going to go into places that are going to stress and yeah. strain your equipment. And that's actually what I was going to talk about with my frog setup. Um, I I use two. I, I go with the medium heavy approach, like you guys were saying. Well, the question was which one, but I'm going to say my, my which two. I'm going to say my other one for grass because well, we I want to know your one seven two heavy zodius. Okay. And especially for largemouth or heavy cover, et cetera, because if you get bit in the heavy grass and it's a big fish, you need to be able to winch them out of there. If you're not and, pulling them out of there, man. Yeah. And 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 the, to me, it's a little bit of a stiffer taper rod than the medium heavy. So I like to be able to really crank into them. I use 50 pound braid, eight to one cron art, because I can really launch that reel. But to me, the reason why I like the Zodius is because of the Spirox graphite, the ability to cast further. Because to me, you want to be able to get that long cast if need be, but also have the leverage to, right. you know, so, penetrate them. So we got big, we got beginners that listen. Yes. We have people that been yep. fishing for a while. Then we have our, of course, we have our our, our legends that, that are out there. Now, for, for a beginner, the thing that we hear in here all the time is, man, I, I love throwing frogs, but I'm losing so many fish. Yes. You know, 
the, the, the number one problem that I see that, that most people run into is that they're trying to use a monofilament, a copolymer, or something like that. Even though it's 20 pound test, they'll try to use this stuff. It, it doesn't work, you know. So, so for, for, for you guys just getting into frog fishing, you got to listen to a couple things. Number one, you got to go braid. It, 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 it doesn't eliminate losing fish, but it allows you to catch the fish that you can hook. Okay. Now, that, that, did, you, did you understand what yes. I said there? Yes. I didn't say it allows you to catch the fish that blow up on it. Right. It allows you to catch the fish that you can hook. The, you know, it, it puts because, your odds at the highest percentage to land that fish. Absolutely. No so, question. so you, you can't even consider frogging with anything other than no, bait. you can't. Yeah. But a lot of guys who make that critical mistake, oh, is we see it all the time on that, newbies. That, well, I mean, that's what we got. Listen, we yeah, got a lot I, of guys that are, that are into this that are just getting into it that don't really know, and they go out and do it, and, and it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. That's a heartbreaker fish that you lost. It was a heartbreaker. I hear it, we hear it all the time. The other thing is, is the rod and reel, you know, needs to be that little bit heavier, you know, that medium heavy, seven two, seven three, seven foot. That's going to help you out a lot with that. But that braid, that braid is the key, and learning the polymer knot is the key. Yes. Well, and Mike, you know the other group of people that you see it on, that you, you that you guys probably hear it from all the time. Yeah. Oh, I was out fishing a tournament, and I had fluorocarbon on all my reels. And it just looked right to throw a frog. So I tied on a frog and I threw it and I couldn't get the hook set in. Right. I would have won the tournament, you know, that the experienced angler that wasn't really ready uh, for the frog cut, bite because it the wasn't up to the top. Well, they so, cut, or they cut the, they yeah. cut, they, 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 they cut, they made shortcuts. Yep. We all do that. Exactly. We've all, and we exactly. know we're doing it wrong, but I'm telling you right now, man, um, it's very important. So we, we just want to make sure that the guy's just getting into it. The th you know, those are a couple things you want to pay attention to is your is your line and your rod and then all these other things we're talking about. Well, yeah, and you talked about walking the frog. Yeah. Um, you talked about your favorite frog being the Spro popping frog. Right. I would like to point out that Spro has now right. upped the popping frog. Right. We and they're up online. You can go in there and to check a them out. Seventy. Right. That 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 product is loaded online. You can go and check them out and see all the different colors. Yeah, but so the whole, I mean, every aspect of this frog has, you know, the, the gotten bigger. The, the he done grown up. It sits deeper. He grown uh, up a little bit legs. bigger hook, a little wider, a little taller, a little heavier, and they also have a little a little brother, baby popper, <laughs> the the fifty. You know, um, popping frog, and let me tell you something. The first time I ever fished that fifty, it was amazing on a super tough bite. The fish I caught on it. Yeah. The George. bad thing about it was they choked it. They choked it. Yeah. Yeah. They choked it. So choked you know what's funny? I feel like two years ago was like the year of the micro frog. Everybody, like all the manufacturers, brought out like these smaller size frogs, like the you, you know, yeah, and, and uh, popping regular, all that stuff. Oh, yeah. So. The other thing I wanted to tell you, you know, we talked about waiting your frogs for the mat. We talked about opening up your hook out and up for a better hook set. For a for a, an easier walk, take your scissors, take your skirt, and cut about a quarter to three-eighths of an inch off of one side of the skirt and shorten that, that leg up. Sure. And the walking action of your frog will vastly improve now some frogs just naturally walk better than others they do they do but it, it one size it longer, just makes it easier one size longer so once you walk it it wants to pull back this way and see what see what happens i mean it helps doesn't it mike and then oh well, yeah when well, then you pull the line see it automatically makes you walk it and then it wants to go back like this and then you just and and i got another little frog tip i want to give you because you're going to come in here or you're going to go to our website and you're going to spend you know seven eight nine ten dollars for a frog you're going to take it out. You're going to go fishing. You're going to decide to change colors. Don't put that wet frog back in your frog box. Why not? Well, whenever that next time arises for you to pull that frog out, those legs are all going to be kind of gummy, gummed together. Not really sticky, no. but, but, but you're going to have to kind of like pick yeah. at them. And so what I like to do, and, and, and this might come as a little revolutionary to you. 
but that's just the kind of guy I am. I like to lay them on the front deck of the boat and let them dry. And then if I'm really on my A game that day. Got a little uh, towel for them? Nope. I take my, after they're dry, I take my uh, fine dressing and I spray the legs. That's, that's, Do you know what Randall and, Sharp uses? And, and they come out of that. They come out of my that's, box. That's very anal, like that. Josh. Yeah, that's but I don't like very... Well, Randall Tharp uses I, you baby missed powder. My point. Very anal. You missed my point. Well, I don't like to spend eight, nine, ten dollars on a frog, and I got forty of them in my box. And when I want to, when I'm jump down and pull that I'm box, not saying out, anything. I'm not saying anything that's bad. I'm just saying it's very anal. Well, I mean, you know, Says you just buy forty you. frogs and just throw them away and put a new one on. I don't do that. Amen, well, brother. Well, Amen. Well, I mean, Amen. Hallelujah. I I got something I got to bring up about frogs, boys. And uh, I want to talk about this frog right here. Then, okay, go ahead. You talk about no, the frog. Go ahead. No, go oh, no, no, Mike. Talk about that frog. And I'll no, you, please, please go ahead. Talk about Bimbo. Because mine's going to be a little controversial. So go. You go All ahead. Right. So we talked about the other problem with frog fishing was the hookup ratio. So all these companies are trying to come up with ways to hook up better to be the, the frog to buy softer bodies, right? Um, bigger yes. hooks, right? Yep. Um, whatever color, certain, certain tweaking colors, you know, but this is the, uh, frog by, uh, Stanford Bates and it's the boom, boom frog. So boom, boom is, uh, um, Fred Rabanus, Fred, Freddy boy right there. Good friend of us uh, here at SFT. And um, nice frog, beautiful body. But one really cool thing that they're doing is right on the top here is a patch of Velcro. So when the, you know, basically when the frog is going and the, and the fish sucks it in, it gets caught in that little bit of sandpaper on their teeth. Yeah. And they can't spit it out and throw it right away. So supposedly they're 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 supposed to get a better hookup ratio, and and he he proves it all the time. I mean he he's really big on that frog. So that's called the Stanford uh, Boom Boom Frog. They call that do they call that something something different, George, like a sticky frog or something? Uh, no, just a Boom Boom Frog. Yeah, Boom Frog. And it has that patch, a little Velcro. See, that's the thing. It's a percentage gain. Yes. The higher you can get your percentage in frogging the better it is, you know, so you can, you know, you get hook, better hookup ratios, you catch more fish. Right. So this is, this is one that's helping out with that. And there is a bunch of frogs to pick from. All right. Z-Man makes a great one too. Z-Man makes a great frog. Of sizes yeah. to choose from. Yep. So what was, what was you it, know? Corbin? Did I cut you off? No, 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 no. You didn't cut me off. All right. I I'm just, sorry. I got something that I got to bring up, boys. What's that? And it kind of relates to somebody that you know that's, Probably pretty good at frogging and flipping by the name of JT Kenny. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I want the viewers to chime in out there. JT Kenny came out on his social media, I think it was yesterday, about yeah. switching reel handles. Yes. And how yes. he. Me and George watched that he today. He converted. He used to be a cast right hand, switch over to left, reel right. And he realized he got more casts in a day. He got better hookup ratio and lost less fish. If he did what? If he went to left hand retrieve reels. So instead of so now he casts and reels. Yeah. Casts reel. There's no casting, switching hands, and reeling. Right. And and the reason why I'm saying this is because he even came out and said, you know, guys, like this is what I learned to do, but I've adjusted because it increased my fishing performance. With particularly he named flipping, yeah. frogging, top right. water, et cetera. Exactly. So, um, you know, I mean, I kind of want to ask you guys, are, are, are you up for uh, trying some left-hand retrieve reels? I think it's a weak argument. What, what do you mean? My reels already switched to the other hand before the lure hits the water. Okay. So, you know, and, and I watched this video, and me and Mike got in a heated, heated. conversation. Almost rolling on the floor. So the one thing. I, I would have whooped his ass. And I love, I love a good argument. And I yeah. love a good conversation, but if you make your point with an invalid fact, I'm out. Well, and and you know what I'm going to say, my man yeah. JT Kenny, and you all yeah. heard me oh, talk oh, about oh, yeah. you, 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 known, you and JT. Like, I've known JT Kenny for oh yeah for I've known JT Kenny since he was sleeping in the back of a pickup. 
He used to bum hamburgers and hot dogs <laughs> off my grill at tournaments because yeah. he couldn't afford to pay for dinner. Right. Didn't he used to live in Maryland? You fished the Potomac and I, stuff with I, him all the time. I love JT yeah. Kenny, but I don't agree with JT Kenny. Right. And I'm going to tell you why. His statement was you flip into the mat and you get bit. Then you got to switch hand. No, you don't. You flip in the mat, you get bit, you set the freaking hook. Then you switch hands well, and fight well, the fish Well, 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 there was phase two. There was phase two. Well, I don't know. I, I was listening to the video. I don't know if you so, watch a different one. No, 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 no. What he, what he said is, <laughs> what he said is, you know, I'm he's right hand dominant. Okay, me okay. too. So when he flips into the mat. Bring me right? home, Corbin. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, I got time to talk here a little bit. <laughs> Instead of putting the, the rod in his weaker hand, He's, I'm not either. He's keeping it in his main. I'm not either. So he's like, it makes sense to keep it here. Okay. I did that. Right. So you set right. the hook. Boom. How are you reeling that fish in? Like this? No, 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 uh, no, at, no, at no. some point no, there is a transition. No, 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 no. At some point there is a transition. I don't transition look like you trying to ride a bike. I'm, I'm flipping. I, I, I get Harley. bit. I set the hook. I grab the reel. I reel the fish in. So you flip in. Right, you set the hook. If I get bit, you 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 transition the fishing rod to your left hand. No, before you, by the time you said that, I've already got the fish in the live well and cold. Oh. While you're still trying to make your point, I, I mean, I'm I'm just saying. All right, all right, hold I, on. I just found it. Okay. So that that was the problem I had with JT's. Well, right. here, here's very interesting. Here's what I thought about right away when when I was watching that. Uh, 15, 20, 18 years ago. Uh, I was fishing a tournament, a local tournament, and I was out. I went practicing, and 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 the bite was flipping the jig in the grass on one of our local lakes that had a lot of grass in it. Yeah, and it was a. It had to be a black and red flake jig with a black and red flake trailer. I mean, it was the bite was off the charts. You throw in the water, it would sink two inches. They would Tink. they would hammer this thing, and they would go like this. Right underneath the grass, right. I mean, instantly like that. It was such a fast thing. And towards I, the boat or away? Uh, to the to. Uh, so if I, if I was fishing, you know, towards you, it yeah. was it was to the right or to uh, the left. Okay. And it was always under under the grass. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I would set the hook, and I and I lost a lot of fish in practice. But I I've seen them. They, they I mean, you throw it in, it would just drop underneath that grass, and you'd see them flash, and they were giants. So I'm like, shit, I got, I got to do something about this. You know, I got to figure out how I can, you know, jack them right away and, and not lose these fish. So I, I was like, oh, my dad's left-handed. My dad's left-handed. I'm going to go get his flipping stick, you know, and I'm going to use his rod and reel tomorrow in this tournament. That's some advanced thinking. Yep. I was like, I'm on this, man. I'm on this. So I go, I get his rod. I got it all rigged up. I go to the tournament. Go to my spot. I flip in. First freaking cast, this giant comes up and eats this jig. As soon as it drops through the water, and I'm like, oh, not today, Jake. <laughs> and I set the hook, and then I was like, I didn't know what the hell to do. I was so, you know what I mean? I was so used D to discombobulated, to turn like this. that I Limited capabilities. I couldn't mentally turn that freaking handle left-handed. I Honestly, I mean, I, I was like, oh, my God, I lost the fish. So. Oh, so re rigged six and one half threw back in again. The same damn thing happened. I set the hook and, and I fought so bad trying to turn that handle. I couldn't fight that fish. It came off a second time. I threw the rod in the bottom of the boat. I got my other rod out and I went at it and I caught fish, but I still lost fish. I, I, I it would take practice. It would take a lot yeah. of practice. I mean, I would to just be able like to, to throw say... in, set the hook, and reel after you'd been doing it as long as we, we have. I just thought it was interesting because it's well, JT. It Kenny is interesting, and and him making the switch. And yeah, fish for it was a great. I get that. It was That's a great. I, said, I just want to bring it, it up. Was a for great a but video, that wasn't that wasn't an overnight transition. Point, no. He made his point with a flawed argument. Now let me take it one step further, and yeah. I can tell you this much about JT Kenny. He's been doing this for a long time. If you're good at flipping, yep, and you're right-handed and you use right-handed reel, you're equally as good at flipping with your left hand. Right. And the reason why is if you've ever punched all day. mats with like a two hour three weight. to four day tournament, <laughs> your arm cannot handle it. Right. So you will have to learn to punch left handed yeah. if you're, you're right, right about that. 
So you are right about that. You know, to all of our viewers and listeners, if you are hardcore about your sport, and we know you are. Absolutely. And you're trying to perfect flipping and frogging, and we know you are. Yep. And yep. you want to really dial in on flipping. Yeah. If you use a right handed reel and you're right handed, the next day you go out fishing, spend the whole day flipping left handed. Well, uh, the whole day. Tom Mills makes a good point. KVD switches his hands and he seemed to have done well. Yeah. Yeah. John Henning. And scroll down here. John Henning, you're all, you're scroll all. Scroll down here. And can and I so, scroll? Can I do so this? Does Wheeler. Is this yeah. touch screen? No, it's not. How do screen. I do that? Gentleman up here stopped in. Keep going. Oh, with Greg Hulsa. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you wait, talking wait, about? You're wait, going, Gregory you're, Hulsa you're, stopped you're, switching hands. He did. Hold up. Somebody up here said something about, about that, too. I must have missed it. Oh, right here. John Wyrick. Yeah. What about I, Gregory Hall? I agree with George. That's wait, what he saw. Wait, go up. I saw something. I knit. Albright said something. Scroll up here. Man. There, there, there's nothing in there about that, because oh, no, that was before we were talking. What did he say? That's about throwing away the frogs. Yeah. Uh, uh, Eric Albright and Mike take care of their frogs the right, same Eric. way. They, they change from a white <laughs> frog to a black frog. They throw the white frog in the box, and then the next week when they go fishing and they're all matted together, they pull them out of the box, they throw them away, and they buy three new frogs. And there's no hey, and there's no, there's no shame in their game. George. There is not. Mikey. Okay. Mikey. <laughs> As an hey. owner of a tackle shop, I rock on. So Sean Neifert, not Sean Neifert, he's now he's now a he he was a Pennsylvania guy and he, he moved to Florida many years ago. Well, not even is it many years ago now. Would you say many? Um, I mean, yeah, it, it's it, working on you know, many. It's so many. It's been it's been several years. Many. And uh, is, is it several or many? I don't know. Is it many yet? It's many. Sean, are you many or are you several? I it's don't know. many. Anyway, he says he doesn't understand. I'm right handed and use a spinning rod by holding it with my right hand. Why would I switch my hand? That's just that's what everybody says when they come in here and buy reels. If you're new to the sport, oh my god! If you're new to the sport, and you're new to bait casting, all of you guys will buy left-handed reels. You just buy them right. because it makes complete freaking sense. If your rods in your hand, it you makes reel with your it hand. makes complete sense. But what my what me and George are saying is, once you're once you're 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 in tuned right to fishing one way, and you did it for so long, that's called muscle memory. Yeah. Try to switch that. It's hard as hell. And oh, who, has, who has the time? The Olympics for it? are coming up, so now you're getting all physiological on us. <laughs> That's right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I, I just, I'm all I'm saying six is six years. He said. That's not years. the question. Is that many or is a few? that many or that's a few? That's, that's several, that's many or a few. I would say many. above ten is 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 many. I say he's been down there for many years. I I, don't, I, I, don't I say many. Whatever. We have two many's and a several. What do you say, cameraman Nick? Several. Two Several. severals and two manys. Yeah, Nick, let me tell you something about cameraman Nick. Several. He is like a glass of water, man. He ain't never going to go on the controversial wild side of life. Well, yeah, that's the way he is. Wait, wait, wait. There I got a question, cameraman Nick. Do you cast and reel with your left hand or do you switch hands? They're like, come on, break, break it down to me here. Get, I switch some... like, oh, my God, you know, they, you know, Mike and George. And, you know, I've tried the other way and it just does not feel right to me. So. If I if I had the time, I might be well, able to learn it, but I just don't. It, it, exactly, I don't have the time and, and anymore to go out and, and and just do it. You know, when I learned to pitch, right? When I learned to pitch, because I'm a good pitcher, I can pitch where nobody else pitches. That's just what I I learned that. I learned that because I knew that was going to be important. George. No one else, George. George, did me you and, cheat, did you teach him that George, with the boat? Well, me and George. So at our shop number two, three. Three shop number three, we had a, a little platform, and in the back corner of, of the shop was a one inch round pipe. And we had a big high ceiling, and we had a high ceiling. There was a one inch pipe back there. And at lunchtime, all of our buddies would come over and we'd take dollar bills out and throw them up on the on the thing. And we'd have this jig and we beat the shit out of this jig. I, I think I still have that. Yeah, somewhere. you do. It was a started out as a half ounce jig. I think it's like a quarter ounce right now. It is. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we used to take that jig and we would throw and try to get it in that one inch hole. And if you got it in there, you'd win the money. Okay. You know, and somebody always won the money every day. 
somebody always won the money. But it it took an hour to get it in there. So we really got good at you know that's how we yeah. learned. But you know we it was you know back in those days shit we we you know we worked all the time too. But we were doing this in the shop. Right? Well, it, I'll tell you this about and I want to I want to put this to bed because we've been dragging this on forever. We were whooping. A I'll dead tell horse. you this about the right handed left handed debate. It's a good debate. There is no correct way. There isn't. Right? There's, it's a good debate. Whatever's right for you is the right way, and it's exactly what I tell newbies to bait casting. There, there is no right yeah. or wrong choice. The yeah. way you learn is the right way for you. So, you know, for the for, right. well, for the love of God, can we move on? And George, well, I mean, it's it's maybe a little a, music and a, roll it. And no, it's a great conversation. It's a great conversation well, it piece, is. and I and, and that's know. that's what I that's what I want to say. Isn't Rambo why... Three was a good movie, but it wasn't four hours long. You watched it four times though. Uh, more than that. Yeah, guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, George, yeah. isn't that why we really love fishing? Because there's really no right or wrong way. There isn't. You know? That's exactly right, Nick. No. Cameraman Nick nailed it. And there's no there's there's a lot of that about fishing. There's a lot of there's a lot of right and wrong. And and, and, and it has to do with how involved you want to get. There's no right or wrong. You can be a total novice and love fishing more than uh more than George loves the Bernie guy. Bernie Schultz. More than Bernie uh, Schultz, right? I was going to say more than you love the dude from the home more than, derby. More than Bernie Schultz, right? <laughs> Don't um, hate on Bernie Schultz, Schultz George. You, no. He's, you hating be, on him. he's hating on him. No. You're hating on Bernie. 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 Listen. Bernie. <laughs> listen. Listen. Let me tell you, you about Let me tell you a quick. Now, people, yeah, you just need people to calm love down. my story, George. I, it's just, hey, you need to calm down. Hey, about people Bernie love Schultz. my story. Are you feeling the Very burn? Wrong with Bernie. Are you Pe feeling the burn? People love my story. I love Bernie. I'm going to tell you a good Bernie Schultz. Bernie's story. been around a long time, so don't, don't forget that. This is his 319th uh, BASS tournament. No, 341st. Wow. That's a freaking amazing. Uh, the best one he ever fished was with me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. We were on Lake Erie out of Buffalo. And he says. It was a cold day. No, it day. wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. He says, I'm off, I'm fishing shallow. I'm like, that's cool. So I threw a couple spinner baits in my bag. So we ran across the lake. He's burning this bank up. It's flat, calm. And if you know anything about super shallow Lake Erie Smallmouth fishing when it's flat calm, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so he's tearing, he's tearing up. We're burning miles of this bank. I mean, we're flying. He's so shallow, we're hitting rocks with the boat. Jesus. And his troll motor batteries go bad. So he says, We're going to go back. We're just on the Canadian side, straight across from a uh, small boat. So he said, We're going to run back and we're going to get some new batteries in this boat. And I'm like, All right. So we run back and we get some new batteries in the boat. And the wind kicks up, and he had a little 518 at the time, Ranger. And on the ride back, on the big pond. On the ride back, he was he was like on a mission from God, wide open. I literally had, I literally was, my hands were bleeding from holding onto that boat. Yeah. Now the fishing was good when we got back. You know, my little spinner bait went to work. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah. I, so I fished with Bernie, you know, and, and Bernie yeah. Bernie was a little aggressive. Yeah, he was. Um, you know, and I was a co-angler, and I wasn't trying to take his fish. I caught my three big ones, and I sat down. Matter of fact, I gave him my spinnerbait. Yeah. I only had two. Yeah. So that's my Bernie Schultz story. Bernie, we love you, buddy. He's great. He's a great guy. Uh, who was the met, other guy? We've uh, met Bernie many who, times in industry events over the yeah, years. He's but a great the, dude. He's a veteran. Who's the Who's the veteran guy that smoked all them cigarettes? Oh, sounds you're like no, Schultz. you're no. Sounds like Schultz. It's uh, no, 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 uh, no, no. He doesn't fish name? anymore. He no, was a, he was a Kentucky Derby jockey. Oh. Yeah, he was sponsored by Evan Williams Bourbon. Smoked like a damn chimney. <sighs> um, and he fished a Triton, and he made the classic. Bernie Schultz and um, ah. Shuffield. Now, Mark, now, Ron Shuffield. Ron Shuffield. Who Ron Shuffield about. smoked a lot. He smoked like a damn chimney. I don't know. Is he, still, is to, he still fishing? Let me try to Google this up. Is he still fishing? Is he no, rolling. Huh? The jockey was no. uh, Pink. K-Pink? No. No. He's a jockey. No. 
K Pink's a jockey. I don't know anything about that. K Pink is a jockey. All right. Kevin Short. Kevin yeah. Short. That's no, K not Pink. Kevin Short. Not That's Kevin K Short. Pink. Dude, wow. I know my I know my shit. It's the K Pink. Jason Quinn. Someone said Jason Quinn. Yeah. No, it's not Jason, Jason Quinn. Quinn. Was Evan Williams? He was Evan Williams. Not, sponsor. He wasn't a horse jockey. No, he, he, Kevin no, Worth. He, Someone said Kevin, Kevin Worth. Worth. That's it. Kevin Worth. St. Chris. You got it. Saint, yeah. Now, Kevin Worth now. Yeah. I mean, he was chain smoking them cigarettes out there on the boat. <laughs> really? You could follow him more, down more the street. More than uh, 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 Ron, Shuffield. Ron Shuffield. No, but Ron Shuffield had the edge on him. Because while he was chain smoking, he was chugging Mountain Dews one after another. <laughs> I mean, he was, he was, oh my God. he was a hard hook set away from a cardiac arrest. Oh my God. <laughs> he was great though, man. He was, he was. Those he, guys, those guys, you know what I mean? Those guys are the guys, man. They're the guys that everybody, I'd like to have a show and I think I'm going to start one. Where are they now? Bass anglers. You know what I'm saying? That would be a cool ass show. I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. Call them guys like up. Byron talk to them. And, uh, we should do that. We should call these guys. Black, yeah. You know, see what they're doing, see how their experience was. I'm telling how, you, man. If it changed their life at all, how did it change your life? I mean, how did it change your life? We got me and George sponsored president aren't, aren't fishing anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea. And like, what do they think about the industry now? Yeah. I what, you know, what's it like now compared to it was then? We, we know a lot of these guys, you know. Speaking of, I'm going to do that. Speaking of Mike, uh, Pete Lusick's off to a pretty good start. Champlain, I saw that. Oh, how he's how's he doing? He got nineteen pounds. He's nineteen like 10, something like that. Oh yeah, Pete Lusick and J JT's at. Don't like bet against Pete Lusick. Yeah, that I, boy I, can catch him I mean, up. I was there. just you know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Pete Lusick. He's another one. I love you know. We're gonna have him on the show. He's a veteran. He's yeah. uh he's all in on the show. We're gonna have him on the show. He might even be our first guest, so that when we you know if we screw something up, he's he's cool about it. He the gets, dean. He the gets dean. it. Yeah. He gets it. Yep. Pete is awesome. Just an awesome guy. Yeah, he is. And a freaking awesome fisherman. fisherman. He is. I mean, you know, that guy, look how many tournaments he's won. A, a bunch. A lot. Pete's, Pete's been, been a tour level pro since the uh, early 90s. Yeah. And he's been around the block. And he, that, that's, that's, you know what you call that? He's won it all. That's, but not, the an ax, that's not an season. accident. That's not an accident. That's not an accident. He's won all the tournaments except for the cup. And the classic. He almost won the cup. He almost did. Shaking the tree, right? Shaking the tree. Told you that story. He's an awesome angler. He's great. Very, very awesome dude. I can't wait to have him on the show. He's coming yeah. on the show. He already and, told me. And, and we invented, the last time we had him on our show, we invented five questions. Yeah. Five questions, which you see done a lot today. Yeah. 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 Was invented here. And then tw 2014. And it yeah. was. 2014. And Pete Glusick was, was the our. first guy. He was our test subject for five questions. Test dummy. And he did well. Yeah. Did great. I mean, he was sweating. We had him under pressure, but yep. he did well. Right? Oh, yeah. So I will immediately start preparing five questions for Pete Luzik, and maybe we can get him on a week or two after ICAST because, you know, he'll be at ICAST working the oh, uh, working. Bash U booth. Yep. Pete's, Pete's, a, Pete's, a, Pete's busy man right now. Yep. Yeah. Very yep. busy man. with the, Right with, now he's going to win a tournament. Yep. But he, he he's he's fishing now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's nice because the next, you know, he really really got some time now. And he's he's doing well. Yep. So can I talk about my secret weapon before we bring this whole thing home? Uh oh. Bring so, it, bring it, bro, man. In certain parts of the world, uh, it's not uncommon to get into a really tough bite this time of the year. And um, a very good customer of ours was telling me about his purchase of the Z-Man bullseye that he got from us and the damage that he has been doing with it. And the bullseye is nothing more than a sophisticated beetle spin. Beetle yeah, spin. That beetle is. Beetle spin. It's, it's the grown-up beetle spin. It's a, it's, a, it's a quality wire. It's a quality mm. swivel. It's a heavy blade with real gold plating. It's got a great black nickel hook. But it's a small hook. It's designed for a small swim bait. Yeah. And yep. beautiful, man. This has proven to be a secret weapon. Yep. Um, secret, with a, secret weapon number 29. With a three inch or a four inch swim bait mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, of your choice. I prefer the, the minnows. And I know one or two. Yeah. So I wanted to uh, bring up 
the secret weapon. I even had, I wrote it down in my book a while ago uh, as I thought about it because, you know, I can't remember anything. Yep. So I wrote it down in my book. I wrote down, I wrote down the uh, finesse. Uh, it's, bullseye. A Z, it's a Z man bullseye. 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 And uh, I can speak to that. has been uh, Kate, Kate if you're book. watching, you can put the link up for that. We, I used that this spring on a good spinner rate bite. Uh, we and the link for the 70 spro really frog. Well. The other, uh, the other secret weapon that Mike and I have been experiencing some good success with lately is the Strike King Baby Z2 on the drop shot. Baby Z2. Now, it became real famous Gets when they were up on St. Clair and Jordan Lee was wearing them out, not even on the baby. He was using a full-size Z2. I, I like um, that, too. But... We decided to, especially Mike, he decided to get involved with it, and we've had some really good success. Fantastic. And, you know, the that's a last tech. It's made by uh, Z-Man for Strike King. Yep. And, I mean, you can catch, like, one million fish off Very of one good. bait. But the trick is, instead of nose hooking it, take a... Nico. Uh, Nico. A, 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 not, not a weedless. Regular but Nico. But an open hook, Nico hook, or even a... Could go weedless if you're if you're around some stuff. You, you could, could. You could. You could. That's a good point. Yeah. Or even a little straight shank light wire worm hook. Yeah. And thread the drop shot baby Z2. A little deeper. Like you were just threading it on. Yeah. So the hook comes out the back, but make sure it's straight. And that Elastec floats. That thing is straight money. So straight, straight I, money. George. Made a we, note we, on that. We like to George. call it, we like to call it Z money. Because I, Mike was wearing me. Out Z money, on this baby. thing about what a week I do. and a half ago. That's I what mean, I do. He was wearing me out on this. Uh, that's what I do, George. Yep. Where are you out, man? All the time. Secret weapons. I mean, what do you got, Corbin? I got I got a secret weapon. I'll talk about in a minute or two. But we won't talk about straight money, George. What in the world? Get your sunglasses on, Nick. Is this? I mean, uh, I, I know uh, I know hell. it's summertime. Is this called Green Apple? Are we going to the snowball shop? This I mean, is the this is like, the latest. Damn. This is the latest special color release from Mega Bass. It's called Crystal Lime Frog. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's just Mega Bass does about once a month or once every two months. They do a nice little crystal, I mean, a, a special color, a special run color. And, uh, you know, we, we get what they'll let us have. And a lot of Mega Bass fans flock in here to get them. We don't... We sell, we sell them out before we can even put them up on our website, but that's Crystal Lime Frog. That's And that's really cool. Special and, yeah. color. And you have it in the Vision 110, the 110 Junior, and the Pop Max, right? Yeah, yeah. that's that's the only baits they run the specials yeah. in. Yeah, that's, that's cool. what they do. Yeah. And that's we got cool. them. Well, yeah. I'd like to talk about uh, one rod in particular that's been very, very good to me this year. Um, and I, I see you got a lot of them in stock, George, and that's the 6.8 Medium X-Pride Spinning Rod. Oh, what um, a great rod. And the only reason I want to say this what is a great rod. It's truly become my go-to all-around rod. I mean, I, I like a seven footer from time to time, seven one, but the six eight, you know, I've, I've done things skipping docks with it, you know, throwing a fluke, drop shot, shaky head, wacky rig, uh, Ned rig. I mean, it, it's it's just incredibly versatile. And you know, it it, it just it's something that to me has wowed me this year that and, and a rod that I'll talk about in the future here, but it's been, it's been a rod that I've, you know, pushed, pushed to the limits this year when usually I would fish NRX, et cetera. But well, it, it, uh, it, it's something that, you know, it's priced right for a high end spinning rod all around. It's, it, it's approved. I love it. That's exactly what's going on with that X pride. That X pride is like your, I mean, I love that. I love that with companies. They come out with yeah. these rods that are underpriced. And we like to dig them out, don't we, George? Mm -hmm. We dig them out. We, and, and they're all in different companies, and they're in here. But the one that really shines the most is the X-Pride because it, it's built with the Xfinity tape in it, and it's built right, and the tapers are right, and the actions are right. And everybody's just like, man, two, two what, 249, 250, something 259, like that. 259, you yeah. know, they're right there. High ends, like high, 280 on the big boys. Yeah, high ends on the big boys at 280, but... So between 260 and 280, you can get a high-end rod. And like Corbin said, I mean, we're fishing NRX, GLX, IMX. We're fishing 
Poison Adrena. Legend we're, Elite. We're fishing Legend, Legend Elite. Legend Extreme. Legend Extreme. The High End Mega Bass. And what's the Daiwa? And we're and tournament, we're fishing Legend Tournament. Yeah, Legend Tournament. And, and we're or, fishing. I mean, uh, Legend. Um, or uh, Saint Daiwa. Tatula Elite. Tatula Elite. Tatula Elite. But the thing is, is that we fished that X Pride, and when you fish it together with all these other rods, it just fits right in there. And, and I took it striper fishing last year, did yeah. some jigging with it. Yeah. I, I know you guys use we use it for tubes, whatever. Yeah. I'm just saying, flat out versatility flat wise, out. It's six just, eight medium on this on on finesse fishing is fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. a great rod. Yeah, John so. Cops in the house. <laughs> Mike Barr still hanging tight with us. Simon Zephyr from over at YouTube. Thanks for stopping by. Um, uh, who else is here? Uh, John Henning's been hanging tight with us. What's up, Copy? John Cops here. He's always here with us. Um, uh, Saint Cress. You guys know him. Yeah, yeah, uh, of course. James Hawk. Jeremy Boyd. What's up, Jeremy? Russell Wright. How you doing, pal? We saw Jeremy at the tournament. Yes, Sunday. we did. Absolutely. Carl Walker. Man, Carl, you're right. You switch hands. It's, he says he switches hands. Feels like a two year old. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you got to really practice. Got a new hat released this this week. Just came in. This is the one George has been dying for. This is our smallmouth Susquehanna smallmouth. I designed it. Uh, hat. It's got the smallmouth patch on the front. It's fire, as uh, Port Norton would put it. It's fire. Inside the smallmouth patch, it says Susquehanna Fishing Tackle. Yep, says Susquehanna inside there, and then it has, uh, you know, nice little drop there. But that's it's a just, genuine and, uh, and leather it, patch. Is that the uh, flex? That's not the flex fit. No, that's bro. not the flex. Really? Yep. No, you... no flex. Okay, that's a nice hat though. It's a, it's it's the nice hat. It's a beautiful. But look at that thing, man. That thing's bad to the bone. Yep. yep. All right, so you know we got, we still got some of the SFT hats in stock. You guys didn't buy them all yet, but you've been working on it because there's not many left. The SFT 3D embroidery hat is still here, twenty four ninety five. Yep. I think that. Well, how much is that one, George? That's twenty four. Twenty four. All the letter patches are twenty four. We got so, some, got some yeah. other hats going on there. Next week, I call guess. the shop. We'll take yep. care of you on. You gonna do your show we'll, next week? Huh? We're, while we're at, well, of course, we're gonna do. Uh, yeah. We're gonna do it here. Uh, me and. Corbin is going to hold down the fort. Outstanding. We're going to have an awesome show for you. That Make sure it's going to be fun. We're going to have maybe a special guest. We might be. We, I'm, all, I'm all thinking I'm special say, guest. Hey, I, I think we built up the suspense. Yeah. We may be a special guest. It may not be. You know, we may have call in inners. We may not. But it's we, going to be a good time. Yeah. And we're going to guess what? Like always, we're going to talk some tournaments. We're going to talk some tackle. Technique. And we're going to talk some technique. Absolutely. That's what we do here. Yep. And that's two of the F's that we talked about tonight. And the third F, well, you guys just got to figure that one out on your own. Thank you for stopping by here tonight and watching us here at Tackle Shop Live. We love you guys. Thanks so much. George, got anything? Corbin, you got anything? Nope. I, I, I enjoyed the heck out of it. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm going to miss it next week. I'm going to try I, to call in. Yep. And uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, take I mean, us home, Mike. I'd like to say something on behalf of us here, George. Have fun next week, man. Yeah. And, uh, I'm sure and, I will. And, 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 I, and I know that you're going to have one heck of it in the pipeline section, man. I know that. Oh, it's I'm sure. Be fun. Yeah. I'm sure. Good luck, yeah. Nick, in your tournament, buddy. Catch all the big ones, and we'll have a, a up update there. Thank you, everybody. YouTube, Facebook. Uh, guests, thank you so much for stopping by. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Tackle Shop Live. Yeah, we are. Day. Oh, right there, you took my breath away. A oh, young and pretty, you wasn't just a dream. The next day, you called me up. You told me I'm your little buttercup. You came over and you fell into my arms. Well, I know what I feel. Please tell me your love is real. You make me smile when I think of you. If I am down, oh, and I am blue.
Wow.